Welcome to the next lecture on the course Descriptive Statistics with R Software. You may recall that in the last lecture, we started a discussion on the concept of movements and we discussed raw movements and central movements. Now, in this lecture, I will introduce you with uh, another type of movements which are called as absolute movement and I will show you that how the raw movement, central movement and absolute movements are computed on the R software. But before we go to the concept of absolute movement, let me introduce you one small topics which is about shepherd correction. Okay, so, you may recall that uh, whenever we have a uh, continuous data or say group data, what we do? We try to group them in, group the data in class intervals and, and the frequency of that group is going to indicate that how many values are present in that interval. Now, if you try to see what are we trying to do, we have here a sort of interval, say here E 1 to say E 2, right. And we assume that the frequency of this interval is concentrated at the midpoint x 1. If you remember x 1 was the mid point of the interval. So, we assume that on the y axis this value here is showing here the value of say here frequency say f 1 for example, first class. But now, if you try to see what is happening, there were f 1 values in the interval or in the class interval e 1 to e 2 and these values were scattered at different location inside this interval. But when you are trying to group all this information, you are assuming that these values are concentrated at x 1. So, you assume that this frequency comes here, this frequency comes here, this frequency comes here, this frequency comes here and so on. And you assume that all these values are concentrated only in the midpoint and this number of values is here f 1. So, in some sense what are we doing? We are trying to group the observations. But when we are trying to group the observation, the information contained inside the individual observation is lost. What does this mean that the information is lost? Suppose I have two values, one is 5 and another is 10. And suppose the mid value of the interval is at 6. So, I am assuming that 5 is also becoming 6 and the value 10 that is also becoming 6. And after this, in case if you try to observe the value 6, two values of 6 like a 6 and 6 you cannot differentiate whether this value was 5 or 10, that which of the value of 6 is representing the value of 5 and which of the value of 6 is representing the value of 10 or in general, we have lost the information about the individual values of x i, whether the values were 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever it is we simply assume that they are just concentrated at the middle value x i. So, you can see here when we are trying to group the observation, there is some error which is introduced. 
And now obviously when you try to compute the movements on the basis of group data, then this error is going to be reflected in the value of movements. And when these movements are not representing the true value, consequently they will be giving us the wrong value of mean, wrong value of variance and wrong value of other quantities which are based on movements. So, this is very important for us that whenever we have group data, we should apply a sort of change or correction in the value of movements, so that the modified or the corrected value of movement is used, which in turn will give us the correct information. Okay. So, in this direction, Professor Shepard worked and he introduced and he provided some expressions and these expressions are based only on the moment and the class interval and he explained how these changes can be made so that the moments are reflecting the value without a grouping error or in simple words Professor Shepard suggested how this grouping error can be, can be treated. So, let us try to start the discussion on this direction. So, we assume that in a group data that the frequencies are concentrated at the middle part of the class interval and this assumption may not always hold true and so called the grouping error is introduced in the data. Now, how to improve these values and how to take care of the grouping error? So, this effect can be corrected in calculating the movements by using the information on the width of the class interval. So, this is pretty simple. So, let us assume that suppose a small c is denoting the width of the class interval. Then Professor W. F. Shepard proved that if the frequency distribution is continuous and the frequency tapers off to 0 in both that direction that is on the left hand side and right hand side then this grouping effect can be corrected as follows. And he provided the value of raw moments and central moments after applying the changes. So, in case of raw moment, Shepard's corrections are applied as follows. On the left hand side, I am trying to indicate the corrected values of moments. And this is the same here also in case of central movements. And on the right hand side, I am trying to indicate movements based on given data without any correction. So, you can see here that the first raw movement that remains the same, there is no error in this case. So, the value of the first raw movement and the so called first uh, raw corrected movement they are the same. But in the case of second raw movement, the second corrected raw movement is a function of second raw movement mu 2 prime and it is adjusted by here a quantity c square by 12. So, what are we trying to do? That in order to take care of the grouping error we are simply subtracting the raw movement by a quantity c square by 12, where c is the width of the class interval. And now, I will get here a new value of second raw movement in which the grouping error has been taken care. And similarly, in case of third raw movement, the expression goes like this and the third corrected raw movement is mu 3 minus c square upon 4 multiplied by first raw movement. And similarly, in the case of fourth raw movement, the fourth raw movement after taking care of the grouping error is obtained by fourth raw movement, then minus c square by 2 second raw movement plus 7 by 240 into c raised to the power of here 4, where once again I would say c is the width of the class interval. And similarly, in the case of central 
movements also we can modify the second third and fourth central movements because uh, first central movement is always zero so there is no grouping error in that case so the second central movement after incorporating the grouping error or after taking care the grouping error becomes the corrected value of the second central movement is equal to the value of second central movement minus c square by 12 there is no change in the third central movement thus third central movement uh, is not affected by the grouping effect so the original value of the mu3 and the corrected value of the mu3 both remain the same similarly for the fourth central movement the value of the fourth central movement after taking care of the grouping effect is given by this which is the fourth raw movement mu4 minus c square by 2 times second central movement plus 7 by 250 into c raised power of air 4. So, basically these are the part which have to be taken care only during the computations and here also you can see that if I explain you how to compute this mu r prime that is the raw moment and mu r which is the central moment or the central moment then after that at least in the first four central moment you can simply write a simple syntax in r software so whatever is the expression for computing a particular moment that value has to be adjusted just by adding and subtracting few terms as proposed by Professor Shepard. So, implementation of uh, Shepard correction in R software is not difficult at all. Now, after this I will come to the aspect of absolute movements. So, how this absolute movement comes into picture? You have seen that uh, when we introduced the idea of absolute deviation what we had done we had observations x1 x2 suppose here xn then what we did we chose an arbitrary value and we subtracted every observation by that arbitrary value a and after this what we did we consider the absolute value of these deviations and after this we simply found the arithmetic mean of all such observations. So, this was simply 1 upon n summation i goes from 1 to n absolute value of x i minus a. Now, in case if I try to consider here the rth power of this. So, I try to add here r. So, now what will happen means if I try to take here r equal to say here 1, this will become simply a sort of absolute deviation around mean and if I try to take here r equal to 2, this becomes i goes from 1 to n absolute value of x i minus x bar whole square which is same as your variance of x. So, this gives us an idea that why not to define the rth absolute moment and the quantity which you have defined here this is called as rth absolute moment about a. So, the rth absolute moment about arithmetic mean based on the sample observations x 1 x 2 x n is defined as like this in the case of ungrouped data. So, this is simply the rth power of the of the absolute deviations and after that what are we doing? We are simply trying to find all such deviations and we are finding out its arithmetic mean. So, this is called the rth absolute moment about arithmetic mean and similarly in case of group data the rth absolute moment about arithmetic mean is defined as 1 upon n summation i goes from 1 to k 
f i absolute value of x i minus x bar raised to the power of here r. So, you can see here that uh, this is the same philosophy or same way of development as we have done here. The only difference is this I have to just adjust it for the case of grouped observation and here this x bar is going to be obtained by this expression. Now, after this I would uh, come on the aspect that how to compute it in the R software. Well, when we want to compute the values of the movements on the basis of given sample of data in R software, then this part is not available in the base package of R. But in order to compute the movements and uh, after that I will show you that when we are trying to measure the departure from symmetry and peakedness of the frequency curve and we compute the coefficients of skewness and kurtosis, then we need a special package. And we need to install the package before we try to compute the moments. So, in order to compute the moments, we first need to install a package which is called as moments and then we load it as a library and then we operate. So, when we are trying to compute the moments, the first step is that you try to install a package moments and in order to do so, what you have to do? You have to simply write install dot packages inside the arguments within the double quotes you simply write m o m e n t s moments and the package will be installed and after this you need to load the package library moments. In fact, whenever you will need to compute the moments you need to upload this library. Now, after this all the sample moments are computed by the command all dot moments a double l dot m o m e n t s and this syntax or this function has several arguments you can see here x order dot max central absolute and n a dot r m. Just by controlling this parameter inside this argument you can generate different types of moments raw moments central moments and absolute moments. So, what is happening? In our package, in our software, we have only one command all dot moments and just by giving different choices of true and false inside the argument to various parameters, we can compute different types of moments. So, there is no separate commands for raw moment or central movements or absolute movements. So, this is what you have to now understand which of the choice of the parameter or the values inside the argument is going to give you which type of movements. Okay. So, now first let me explain you the meaning of this argument. You see the first value here is x, this is going to denote the data vector. Then there is another parameter here order dot max. This is written here as 2, but this is going to give us the information on the number of movements to be computed. This I have explained in the next slide here, you can see here like this, but I will try to explain you here also. And 2 here is the default value. Now, in case if you want to compute 3 moments, 4 moment, 5 moments, 6 moment, you have to simply choose the appropriate value here. Next command here is central. Central is indicating for central moments and the default value which is taken inside the all command is false that is the logical false. 
but in case if you want the central movements then what you have to do you just have to use the logical true. So, in place of here false you simply try to type true and it will give you the central movement. Similarly, the next option is absolute. So, absolute will give you the values of absolute movements. The default value which is taken in the command all dot movement is false, but in case if you want to compute the absolute movement you simply have to replace this false by logical true and the last syntax it is known to you now this is na dot rm is equal to false. So, this will try to help us in the case of missing values means if you want to compute when the missing values are present then what you need to do you simply have to change this logical false to logical true capital T R U E. So, this is how just by handling different arguments with different logical true and logical false you can generate the value of different moments. For example, in this slide I am trying to explain all these things in detail so that you can have a look. So, this is about ordered max, this is about central, this is about absolute and this is about n a dot r m same thing which I have just explained you right. Now, after this I will try to take an example and I will try to show you how those things are being computed. So, I am taking again the same example that we have used couple of times in the earlier lectures that we have a data of 20 participants in a race and this data has been stored in a variable here time and now I would like to compute different types of moments for this data. So, as I said first we need to use the command install dot packages to install the package moment and then I have to load this package by using the command library moments right. Now, after this I will show you that how to compute raw moments, how to compute central moments and how to compute absolute moment. So, first I try to take the raw moments and suppose I want to compute first two raw moments. So, I have to control it by here order dot max 2. So, I use the command here all dot moments and the data vector time and I have to give here order dot max equal to 2. In fact, even if you do not give this option even then you will get the same outcome, but my objective is to show you that how the things are being controlled. So, you can see here now once you execute it you will get here this type of outcome. Now, the next question is what is the interpretation of this value and other outcomes. The first value here is 1.0 which is denoting the value of mu 0 prime that is the value of raw moment at r equal to 0. Similarly, the second value here 56.0 this is denoting the value of mu 1 prime that is the value of raw moment at r equal to 1. So, this is the first raw moment right this is the first raw moment and similarly the last value here 3405.2 this is the value of mu 2 prime that is the value of rth raw moment at r equal to 2 and this is denoting the second raw moment which is 1 upon n summation n i goes from 1 to n x i square right. Now, in case if I try to repeat the same command just by changing here the order dot max equal to 4. Then what will happen? Now, you can see here that in this earlier case the maximum value of r up to which the moments are computed this is r equal to 2 and this is the same value which is here order dot max is equal to 2. So, now suppose I want to compute first 4 raw moments. So, in this case I simply have to give the value here 4 
and when I try to execute this command with order dot max equal to 4, I get this outcome. So, you can see here the first value is the value of mu 0 prime, second 56 value is the value of mu 1 prime, third value 3405.2 is the value of mu 2 prime, fourth value is the value of here mu 3 prime and the last value here 1508073.2 this is the value of mu 4 prime. So, you can see here this fourth which is the maximum value here fourth this is being indicated by this order dot max. So, this will give you the first four moments. Now, before going further let me try to show you that how to compute it on the R software. So, first I try to create the data vector which is here like this. So, you can see here this data vector here is like this and yeah I already have installed this package on my computer, but yeah you need to uh, install the package and uh, I am simply trying to upload it. So, now this package is uploaded moments. Now, I try to use the same command here all dot moments of the data vector time and I want to compute the first two moment that is mu 0, mu 1 and mu 2. So, this is like this if I try to compute say first four moments starting from mu 0, mu 1, mu 2, mu 3 and mu 4 raw moments. So, this is going to give you here like this suppose here you want to compute 8 moments you simply have to give this and you will get the outcome. A very important point which you have to notice here is that in the command all dot moments if you are not giving any option like as central or absolute or na dot rm etcetera the default outcome is the raw moments this is what you have to always keep in mind that whatever outcome we have obtained here these are the default outcomes of the command all dot moments which are the simply the raw moments right. Now, I will show you how to compute the central moments. So, again I will repeat the same thing that first I will compute the central movements up to order 2 and then up to order 4. So, what I have to do here my command or the earlier command remains the same here all dot moments of the time data vector with order max equal to 2. What I have to do here that I simply have to add here one more argument central dot central is equal to logical true the default value here is central is equal to false. So, I try to add here this central is equal to true inside the argument separated by comma and the first outcome here is indicating the value of mu 0 and that was already shown that it will always take the value 1. Similarly, if you come to the second value which is 0, 0.0 why this is 0, 0.0 because this is indicating the value of mu 1 which was 1 upon n summation i goes from 1 to n x i minus x bar and this always takes value 0. Similarly, if you come to the last outcome 269.2 this is indicating the value of mu 2 which was nothing but 1 upon n summation i goes from 1 to n x i minus x bar whole square. And if you see this is nothing but the value of variance of x or here x is actually here time the data in time vector. Now, similarly if you try to repeat the command and if you wish to compute the movements up to the order 4 then you need to make here only one change that order dot max is equal to here 4 and the same command and you can see here that this is here the outcome where first value is denoting mu 0, second value is denoting mu 1, third value is denoting mu 2, 
fourth value is denoting mu 3 that is the value of the third central moment and simply the last value here this is denoting the fourth central moment. So, you can see here that it is not really difficult to compute it. Now, I will try to show you the computation of these values on the R software so, on the time data. So, you can see here I try to take here like this and I get here the moments up to order 2 that is 0, 1st and 2 moments. Similarly, if I try to make it here 4, I get here first 4 value and similarly if you want to make here say here first 8 moments, you have to simply make order dot max equal to 8 and here is the outcome. So, you can see here it is not really difficult to compute these values. Now, let us come back to our slide and try to see finally that uh, how to compute the absolute moments. Now, we have understood that as we have computed the central moment, similarly we can compute the absolute moment just by controlling the argument values. So, in this case if I want to compute the absolute moments say up to second order that will r equal to 0, 1 and 2, my command remains the same as earlier all dot moments time order max equal to 2 and now I add here one more option that is absolute is equal to true. The default value is absolute is equal to false, but now I need absolute moments. So, I am trying to give here absolute is equal to logical true and this gives me here this these values. So, as we have done in the case of earlier example, this first value that is going to give us the value of absolute value of mu 0 which is always equal to 1 and second value here this is giving us the absolute moment that is the first absolute moment and this second value is giving us the value of second absolute moment. So, this is nothing but 1 upon and summation i goes from 1 to n absolute value of say x i minus x bar whole square which is here the variance. And this mu 1 first absolute moment this is the value of 1 upon n summation i goes from 1 to here n absolute value of say here x i minus x bar. Now, similarly if you want to compute the moments up to order 4 then I have to just make order dot max equal to 4 and the same command I try to use here and this gives me this outcome. So, obviously this first value is going to give me the first value of absolute moment at r equal to 0. The second value is the value of first absolute moment, third value is the value of second absolute moment and fourth value is the value of third absolute moment and last value is the value of fourth absolute moment. So, this is how you can compute these absolute moment and I will try to show you it on the R console also. So, you can see here, here we have the time data and then I try to compute the absolute moment with order max equal to 2 which is giving me the first three values and now I try to choose first four moments and these values are given to be like this. Similarly, if you want to compute any higher order value say up to 9 moment it is coming out to be like this. Remember one thing th this counting is starting from 0. So, that will so if when you take order dot max equal to 9 there will be 10 values. This is the screenshot what we have just uh, done. After this I will try to show you what is the use of last uh, option that when we have some missing value. So, I will take the same data set in which the first two values have been removed and they are substituted with uh, uh, n a. So, now and this data vector has been stored here as a time dot n a. Now, after this in case if I want to compute here the raw moments in this case I have to simply use the same command all dot moments the data vector and, and suppose I want to compute first four moments. So, I have to give order dot max equal to 4 here and then I have to say here n a dot r m is equal to true and if you do not write it then the default value here is false 
and once you execute it you will get here the same outcome. So these are the values computed in the same way as in the earlier example. The only thing is this now those uh, missing value have been removed and then the raw movements have been computed. Similarly, if you want to compute first four central movements in this case, you have to use the same command that you used earlier and with the date data given by time dot na and use na dot rm is equal to true and this will give you here the outcome and this request has the same outcome that this is the value of here mu, mu 0, this is the value of mu 1, third value is the value of mu 2 and fourth value is the value of mu 3 and the last value is the value of mu 4. And similarly, if you want to compute the absolute moment in this case, then again you have to use the same command of absolute uh, values computation and just add here na dot rm is equal to true. And you get here the value of the absolute moment for r equal to 0, the value of absolute moment for r equal to 1 that is the first absolute moment, then second absolute moment for r equal to 2, then third absolute moment for r equal to 3 and finally the last value for r equal to 4 indicating the fourth absolute moment. Now I will try to show you that how to get it done on the R software. So first I try to create the data vector here. So you can see here this is my the data and now if I try to compute the raw movements and if I and uh, suppose I show you that that if I do not use this option na dot rm then what will happen. But after execution this command you will get the same outcome that we have used earlier. Now I will try to remove this na dot rm is equal to true and you will see that it is giving you here na 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 na. The first value is coming out to be 1 because that will always remain true whatever is the value of here r. And uh, similarly, if you want to compute the central movements here, just use this command and you will see the outcome here. And uh, similarly, if you want to compute the absolute movements over here, then simply use the command for absolute moment and you get this outcome. And similarly, if you want to compute higher order movements in the case of missing values, simply try to control the value of order dot max. So now I have given you the basic concepts of movements and I have explained you how to compute them on the basis of given set of data. Now it is your turn. Try to take some data sets and try to practice and try to observe that just by choosing the logical true and logical false inside the arguments which are given to the different parameters how you can generate raw movements, how you can generate central movements and how you can generate absolute movements. And in the next lecture, I will show you what is the use of third and fourth order movements by considering the concepts of skewness and curtises. So you practice and I will see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.